So I've come to my friend Joe's house and oh look there's a cat in the doorway there and Joe lives in this amazing house that they looks like they're still building yeah I think there's still building work going on and uh, it's a straw bale house and her and her family live here uh, she makes these very very beautiful baskets uh, it's one of the many skills that she has and when I was thinking, not that, that's my basket back there, but when I was thinking about putting the Christmas boxes together for you guys, I had this idea. So I had this idea that it would be really nice if uh, there were some lovely natural things in there. And so Joe, who's just coming in here now, where are you gonna sit, Joe? Um, I shall sit here. Okay, sit there and I'll set the camera up. Because what Jo's going to do, I'll show you the willow stars that she's made for the boxes in a minute. But she's going to make one for us, I think. I need to get my willow. So yeah. you grow, so you grow this ten different varieties. Yeah, about ten different varieties. Um, what for different coloured bark? Different coloured bark, and they have different. They all have slightly different properties. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. So there's a red willow. Yeah. That's no, that's not quite the red willow. That is some of the stars are made from the red willow. Actually, so. Jo has made a star for every single one of the Christmas boxes. So this is different colours. So there's a couple of different colours in here. So that's so this that is a red one is. So that's having its strap put on at the moment. So that's this is a, a basket a that will have a, a handle, a strap on it, and yeah. you just carry it over your shoulder yeah. and um, put anything in that. It's a lovely yeah. shape. I like the shape of that one. Leather shoulder, leather, leather shoulder, shoulder bag. strap. So they... Do you have a website where these things are for sale? Yes. Oh, we'll it's... make sure that that's in the <laughs> description box below. It's Abundant Earth, yes. Abundant Earth, and, and so, yeah. but we'll make sure that, that you can uh, link to that if yes. you want to, because there's be so lovely. many things going on here. Yeah. And I've known you for a long time, years haven't and I? Years and years. Years and years and years, and, uh, but I don't, haven't been here very often. Uh, which is a, a shame. So I got a bit lost on the way here today. <laughs> but it's about a, an hour and a half, hour and, hour and 10 minutes. It's about 50 miles, so yeah. Yes, okay. And I don't drive very fast. Yeah. And so it's an hour, it's an hour and a half for me. Mm, yeah. So when do you harvest so, this? So this is winter, harvested in winter. And um, it's cut down to the ground. So it's yeah. coppiced all the yeah. way down to the base. Yeah. And then it's all stacked up against a fence. So at the moment, I'm just teasing out the curve in the base of the willow. So that'll make a small, fairly small star. So I'm going to make four kinks in it. So they want to be roughly the same distance. Okay. So I'm getting my thumbnails and just bending the willow. And then I'm going to make another one there. Okay, by eye then. Yeah, I could use a tape measure or a ruler, but, it is, it, but I don't. You've done enough of these to know what, yeah. where to make the bend. So I, I can just bend it over, have a have a little. Oh yes, yeah, so I can bend it over, have a little bit of a look where the next so, kink is going to okay, be. Okay, and four of those, and then we're going to do another one. So, so it's uh, autumn now, and so this was cut in the winter. This was cut last winter, and so what do we have to do to it? So yes, it dries for a long time, okay. depending on the weather. So Joe's just tied that into a knot. I've just made it. I've just crossed that over to make a little triangle. Oh, this is great! And then I've got another elbow joint there, and because I wanted to go in and out all the time, so it sticks together. I'm going to get the tip and take it back through the centre. Yeah. Trying not to kink it as I go. And then I end up with a kind of Funny weird looking. little well, thing. Well, that's what all mine look like. Yeah. <laughs> and then all I'm going to do is just sort of negotiate it into position. Make it look like a star. And ta-da, we have a wow. star. With a little end. And so the tip, I'm going to just bend around there. Wow. Back through the little triangle. <laughs> this is great. And then I make a little gap there. I'm going to go back ah, into right. there. So it's almost like you're weaving it off I've, almost. Yeah, I've just tied a knot in it, yeah. basically. Yeah. The red willow, the property of this red willow is a little bit different. It's quite, it takes a really long time to soak. Okay. But it holds the soak really well. So then it, it's, that, that's actually come out quite nice and flat, but often I'll just 
sort of nudge it into position if it needs it. I love them. And then we end up with a little star. And, and then I'll just trim, <sighs> trim the ends off. So what I love about willow work is that we don't really need any tools apart from some secateurs. You can yeah. make a basket with nothing but a pair of secateurs. Isn't that amazing? I love it. Well, every single Christmas box is going to have one of these. And it's a, such a beautiful natural thing. I guess you could just hang that on your Christmas tree. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you do what you like with it. I do love what them. you like with I it. I love them. So that we got to the drying of the willow oh. and then we're left with a very dry piece of willow so we then need to soak it. So that willow has been in my big water tank for about three days, four days. Oh, so when days. I asked you to make these, you went and got that dried stuff and soaked it? Yeah. I see. So and it that's sits what in you... the tank and then, and then it comes out and then it gets wrapped up in an old towel for okay. a couple of days. Right, so okay. Then it's, yeah, then it, so that's mellowing and then it becomes really flexible as you can mm. see. So, yeah. I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah. Thank you. And then of course, next stage up, you know, Joe will be making things like baskets. this. It's a different kind of thing. Uh, We're having a cup of tea now in the sunshine. Let's yeah. move that out of the way a bit. And, a beautiful uh, sunny day. Yeah. What else are we doing? Catching up? <sighs> Sorting everything out. Just catching up, putting the world to right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay, guys, so that's where they come, came from, your beautiful willow stars. <laughs> yeah, you can't see them. And the um, I'll show you the next thing that's going in the boxes uh, when we've got those. Thanks, Joe. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. So carrying on then with all the bits and pieces that are in the Christmas boxes, I decided that I would like to continue with the red theme and give everybody a red origami crane. So inside each of the boxes, one of these will be tucked into the packing. Now, I've been making these while I've been watching Arne and Carlos sit and knit for a bit. They do this lovely little chat on a Wednesday evening for me, uh, sit and knit for a bit. And they said right from the start uh, on episode one, you don't have to knit. You can do anything. You can crochet, you can make scones, you can do whatever you like. And so I left them a comment saying, uh, I'm sitting uh, and, and making origami cranes for a bit with you. Uh, and that, that's, that was lovely. So the, uh, I've been folding these then with Anna and Carlos. And then Anna, you saw them, didn't you? And yes. you said, will you teach me to make origami cranes? Yeah, because I've never made one before. And you quite like some hanging up in the house somewhere? I was thinking I'd put them on the Christmas tree. Okay, cute, that would be it? lovely. That would be lovely. Yeah. Now... I'm making these in red, but what I've also got this lovely origami paper here, which is all in in really gorgeous Japanesey type fabric, uh, fabric not fabric uh, prints, lovely origami prints. So what I want you to do then is just select one that you like the look of, okay. and I've, I've, I'm going to teach Anna to make cranes and make cranes at the same time, and maybe you'd like to make a crane. <laughs> so this is what we're going to make then now. My paper hasn't got a, a, a right or a wrong side, but yours has. Mm. So you need to put the colourful side down on the table. In fact, I think I'll make one of these mm -hmm. in this nice paper with you. Colourful side down. Lovely colours, isn't it? Uh, beautiful colours. Yeah, I really liked them. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so the first thing you're going to do is make what's called the basic base, which is this. Is that his actual name? Yeah, because basic base. yeah, because most origami, a lot of origami um, things that you fold start with this basic base, ah. and that's why in making these cranes, I've folded a whole heap of bases. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So, so a couple of things about origami: you can't fold it up in the air like this; it's not accurate enough. Okay, and when you do your folds, um, they have to be nice and accurate and really firmly scored. So when we First fold is corner to corner, and we're going to really firmly score that. And what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to film this overhead, and then I'll just stick it in the corner somewhere so that you yeah. can see what we're doing at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes your thumbnail's a good thing to use, okay? And then open it out, and these first few folds um, are going to go corner to corner the other way. With origami, usually what you do on one side, you do on the other, almost always actually I find 
Um, I don't really get beyond folding very basic things, but it's usually about that. What you do on one side, you do on the other. What's the most impressive origami thing you've ever made? Excellent. It doesn't really get much better than that. <laughs> but it's the numbers of them I make. Can yeah. you remember your wedding? I can. How can you not remember your wedding? <laughs> can you your wedding. It was such a long time ago. It was actually. It was seven years ago, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. We should put a little. Um... I'll put a picture yeah. in. Yeah. Okay, so we've done that fold then, which it makes a cross, and now we're going to fold it side to side. And when you finish these folds, they look a little bit like the Union Jack flag. Okay. So that's what you're looking for. You're looking for all four folds to be. Um, like a, a little bit flag-like. <laughs> Do you follow any origami channels? No, channels? I really don't. Oh, that surprises me. Oh, that surprises me too. It's the kind of thing I would like, isn't it? Yeah, so I it thought you were like, going to say like yeah, 10. And meanwhile on origami <laughs> schmoo. <laughs> no? So it looks like that when you're done. Okay, now this next bit then, mm -hmm. if you watch, what we're going to try and do, we're going to get hold of the diagonal folds like that. Uh -huh and push them in so that, hang on a minute, I'm making a pig's ear of this, no, not that way. That's it. So we take, so don't take the diagonal folds, take the side folds, I'm sorry. Take your thumb and fit, that's it. And what you're gonna do with that is push it in so that you end up with it looking like that. So this square face here, is going to meet that square face there and those two bits are going to push in okay so that square and that square are going to be on top of one another and you're going to have pushed these sides in you had it nearly there <laughs> no you did so that square the way that you do it is by holding it like that uh -huh. push them together right and then when you put that down on the table and oh, fold it okay. okay so this is the basic base and you can go a long way with, uh, with uh, once you've done that. OK, yeah. so you need the open sides pointing towards you down on the table. OK, so you need this side here. You're going to take this folded bit here and carefully fold it up so it's in a kite shape. OK, so that's folded against the central line. It's hard to see, but you're going to you're going to make this and then you turn it round and do the other side exactly the same way. So you do that like like that. So it looks it looks like a kite. OK, mm -hmm. and then turn it over and do the other side the same. OK. Did you learn to make these for our wedding? Or I, had I you made knew them how to make them. Um, so years ago, I had a physical shop, a real shop, and I used to uh, run all sorts of little courses, but I used to do things like wedding planning. You know, people wanted to do alternative wedding stuff yeah. or birthday parties. And I remember one woman who was having her 50th birthday party because there's a tradition about cranes. If you fold a thousand cranes, mm -hmm. uh, it will bring you uh, health and wealth and happiness. Yeah. Uh, which is, they're good things to have, aren't they? Mm. Uh, and so this woman wanted... It's slightly smooth on that side, so you do it. Uh, you just run into problems if, if it's not really accurate now. Yeah. Okay? Okay. So now, the next thing we need to do, it looks like a, uh, a kite, but now we're going to make it look like an ice cream cone. And you're going to fold that top bit down, over, right over there and then turn it over and fold it the other way. Now those folds don't stay, but they help this next fold. Okay. Okay. So it's just like you folded those so that they're flappy loose like that. Just makes this the next thing we're going to do really easy. And do it. Yeah. And then sit it back up again so it looks like that. Now you're going to open this and this and you're going to open the whole thing up and you're going to open it up like this so that it looks like a duck's beak. Open it up, like open that. it up, yeah, but you're going to fold it back, back on itself along those folds so that what we get now is a really nice big 
triangle. So that's perfect. And so that fold that you've just done really helps you. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Because without that that fold that we just did with the top there, mm -hmm. you'd be uh, working um, against the paper. And then you're going to do exactly the same to the other side. So that what you end yeah. up with is a lovely big triangle. A very lovely clever. big uh, diamond. So that came up, up with this must have been Japanese like... Japanese are very they're clever lot. Yeah, but then you've been like, how did I, how did I do that? <laughs> how did I do it all again? I think there's a, like a mathematical brain, isn't there? And there's yes, a cleverness to it. Very much this. so. I don't have a mathematical brain. No, me neither. But mm. I can follow the, the instructions for this one and turn it over and do the same on the other side so that both of them are open. So you're going to just open these out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Open, open, and open this out. And then make that. That's it. Make the duck's beak and fold that down so that what you've got is a is a big triangle there. So there's a couple of, so that's it, it's good. Press it down on there so it's nicely pressed. Okay. Now there's a couple of places you can go wrong now. And so in, in order to not go wrong, mm -hmm. the, to, the top half is closed, but the bottom half is like legs. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So this next thing that you're about to do, you have to do it on the open part, not okay. on the closed part. So we're going to pick this up now and fold that. It's quite tricky because it's very thick. And we're going to fold that all the way into the middle like that. Like that? Yeah, it's quite skinny and thick, but you're going to fold that into the middle and press it down with your finger really firmly. Same on the on other both side. sides, yeah. Nice, good folds. And then turn it over and do exactly the same again. Try be careful that you, you get the folds nice and even. So now it looks like an even thinner triangle thing with two legs. So the mistake you can make there is folding this fold on the top half so mm. it doesn't open out. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Now pick it up now. And what you're going to do now is open these two pages like the pages of a book and open these two pages like the pages of a book so that they fold in on one another and Gosh, you end up with it looking so like much that. more complicated than you think it's going to yeah, be. Yeah, I've it? made uh, look how many I've made. <laughs> Hundreds of them. Okay, so there's that's looking like that now. Now, mm. we're nearly there. We're on the home run. Okay. Take this bottom bit here and fold it up to meet here. So just one of them. Mm. Take one of them and fold it up to meet the top so that all the points are at the top now. Yeah. One point at the top, two points at the top. And the smaller it gets, the more tricky it gets because the more folds of paper you've got. Mm. Okay, so that's looking like that now. Good. Now, that folding, that opening like the pages of a book we did, you're going to fold these back open again now so that they're folded back on themselves. Now we're nearly finished. You can take one of these very thin bits here and watch this. I'm just going to pull it out about that far and, and squash it at the bottom. So pull that to so get hold of it and pull it out. I'll just help you a second because you need that to you need stay it to folded. stay closed. Yeah. So you're going to pull it out and squash it like that. And that's the tail or the head. And then do the same with the other side. And that's the head or the tail. So you've got those two there sticking out like that. Mm -hmm. Then choose which one you like the look of for the head. <laughs> doesn't really matter. And then you're going to fold it down like that, about a centimetre. No, open it out and fold it. Sorry, I should have said. So how to get the head now, you open this out and fold it on the inside like that uh. and then close that again. OK. Because then when that's closed inside there, you just fish inside and pull it out so that you can make the angle of the head how you want it. And then you just smash the top of the head with your thumb and finger. So you have that however you want it. And the tail just leave. And then you take one wing and fold it down. And another wing and fold it down. Fold it right down. Pull it, pull it right down as far as it'll go. That's it. Cute. Ah. Oh.
pair of cranes. Now, if you wanted to to hang them up, mm. you get a needle and 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 uh, with some thread on and push it through there. There's a, a natural hole there, uh -huh. and, it, and then just push it through the top, and then that will hang. And what I did for your wedding cranes is I put some beads on the bottom of here yeah. so that it would hang and give it some weight, and then a couple of beads, and then a length and another crane, and we did them in runs like that. So there you are. You can have that one. Thank you. Because I'm making red ones. Oh, cute. So you're going to make another one? Mm-hmm. Make another one. I'm going to see I if I can do it without... Without me whittering on. <laughs> see how far I get. Well, I'll make one beside you so you can look across if you want to, but I won't say anything. Perfect. So let's have a look at yours, Anna. Okay, so I've got... And they're going on the tree? Yeah. With quite a few more? You're going to make a load more? Yeah, I think so. And I've got your one, which I can pretend can I've also that. made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can have that one. But I'm going to carry on now and make these uh, la larger paper, so they, they're uh, bigger, to, bigger cranes. And I'm going to make these, and there'll be a crane like that tucked inside every one of the boxes. Nice. Um, just you, you dig around till you find it. It'll be there. <laughs> Okay, Anna? Perfect. Right. Let's Thanks. crack on. Right, so cracking on. That's what we're doing now. Yep. See you later, guys. Bye.